So it's been absolutely ages since I posted about this project. The pandemic has had me very busy and there hasn't been much time for my hobby. Um, but since there was something new to show today, I thought I would uh, post something. So last time I posted a video, I was working with this circuit here. So this was the TMS 9918A, um, a 1970s, 1980s era video display processor. And I was using that to try to get video output from my computer. Um, and I think I'd posted some video. I had it working a little bit, but it wasn't entirely um, resolved, which was a little frustrating because other people have managed to make this circuit work, which is a circuit to try to uh, make the, the processor work with um, static RAM rather than dynamic RAM, which is what it was designed for. Um, it was giving me a slightly hard time. And then unfortunately I left it on for a few days. Um, and the TMS processor runs pretty hot. And as you see here, there's no heat sink or anything on that. So running for a few days, I'm pretty sure it kind of burned itself out. It just, it was, it was incredibly hot. If you power it on now, it gets super hot to the touch within seconds. Um, and so I think that chip is pretty much dead. I have some other um, copies of it, so so I could keep on doing that, but I thought I would try something else in the meantime, because I was looking around online and found, um, this. So this little board, which comes from Adafruit, um, is based around an RA8875 LCD controller. So that um, chip in the middle there is the RA8875. What that will do is it will drive um, an LCD display of up to 800 by 480 pixels. Um, there's one here. Um, and it has hardware accelerated graphics in it and so forth. But the particular feature of it that, I, that, that appealed to me was that you can control it with an SPI protocol. Now I've already built SPI into my computer because SPI is what I use to talk to the, the, um, the HD card there, which you can't quite see under all these wires. There we go. Um, so I figured I already had an implementation of SPI. How hard could it be to try to um, drive, uh, drive this chip to? Um, so, so that's what I've been doing for the past couple of days is you'll see the, the 8875 is connected um, via this flat flex cable to um, uh, what, like five-ish inch LCD display. And in the other end is coming to the 6522 here um, uh, running, on, running on my computer where I can bit bang the SPI protocol. Um, the other thing I've been doing is fortunately the, um, the, the Adafruit system comes with code for an Arduino. So I started off just using the Arduino to make sure it was working and make sure I understood how to use it. And then I've been sort of using that uh, code as a guide for the initial configuration and getting my, getting my software to work. And as of today, it actually works. Let's just see if I can put something up here. Um, see if I can send a message. Oh, now it's died. Let's see. Try a second time. There we go. Um, so, so we can actually get text out of it. Uh, we can, um, so this is, I am using a program over here. This is the, my serial program speaking to the 6502 um, and I can um, enter text and have it come up over here on the um, on the on the display, I can actually switch colors as well. Although I'm not sure how uh, useful that is, because with the black background, it's hard to see the the blue text or um, some red and so forth. Um, but it's, it just basically means the, the 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 basic mechanism is working. I'm not doing anything yet with um, the with the. Um, the graphics, so let's say it'll do accelerated graphics, it'll paint circles and squares and things like that and do full color. Um, the font that's built in is scalable and can go in different directions. So, so you can do all sorts of different things with it. Um, it's not, it has to be said, a terribly efficient way of printing text as probably more, because I'm bit banging the SPI, it's definitely more time consuming than, um, than just sending it out the, the, the serial port here. Uh, but it's um, but it's given me a video solution, and that's nice. And what that also started me thinking 
um, was for a new direction perhaps to take this project in. So, so as I said, this display is probably about um, probably about five inches, and you know, it's around about the same size, I think, as a printed circuit board implementation of this computer would be. So this one is wire wrapped, um, but if I was to uh, put it onto a PCB and have a PCB printed, um, the PCB would be a lot more compact um, than, than this layout. It would be a lot smaller and it would probably be around about the same size as that screen. And that raises a really interesting possibility. Suppose you had a PCB version of this computer um, along with um, uh, uh, that board for the, for the video display and a display of that size all put together um, in, say, a 3D printed case and a self-contained um, enclosure. And maybe I should put a, a PS2 port onto it for keyboard input as well. Um, and then you could just pick it up, carry it around, plug it into power, plug in um, a keyboard and use your 6502 absolutely anywhere. And I just really like that idea. Um, it would be it would be a lot of fun where using a video chip of this sort is not exactly period authentic for the 6502 um, but on the other hand the um, the benefits of having something like that that you could just carry around seem to um, over uh, overcome the, the the lack of period authenticity so I'm really enjoying playing with this um, and playing with this idea I, and there's a bunch of things I would have to try to figure out in order to do that um, uh, I know people have built PS2 interfaces, but I haven't actually done that, so so we'd have to do that. I'll have to figure out how to use KiCad properly in order to generate schematics for this and be able to print up a circuit board, but it'd be nice to be able to post the schematics anyway so that people can use that. Um, and I've also got to do some measurements to see whether it's efficient. I mean, I know it's not very efficient, but to see how inefficient it is to be driving the screen via SPI. And if it turns out that it's really inefficient, then maybe I'll explore using Daryl Richter's um, 65 SPI, which is a CPLD, a programmable logic device that um, that uh, can is designed to sit on the 6502 bus, but can um, can support, uh, can take offload some of the work of um, of communicating via SPI, and that would certainly make things make things a lot faster. So that's where this project is now. I'm going to be playing around some more, making the graphics work. But since today was the first day this actually said anything, um, I thought I would. Uh, show you this and show that the project is not yet completely dead. And indeed, with this idea of a self-contained unit, it might take on a new lease of life. Um, okay, well, I will update everybody when I have anything more to say.